Hello and welcome to Hating TV. Today is about the electric fence erection. You know what I mean, not that sort of thing. Anyway, we put up the electric fences. Justin, why do you before we put electric fences? You only have, what, 10 cows, 11 cows? Because we keep them on a very, very small area. So, again, I'll explain that later on. But what I am going to explain is these two. So, uh, two years ago, we decided that we would upgrade to solar panel electric fences rather than um, sticking with our battery operated ones, which like just go through batteries for fun. And these two have been pretty awesome. I'll put that one next to it. So we've got a Rutland fencer, this one, and a Gallagher fencer, that one. I don't know what everyone else thinks of uh, electric fencers, but both of these are pretty good. Personally, I prefer the Gallagher. Gallagher, I think it's just, it just seems tougher. Absolutely perfect, three settings. Like, you know, especially for training the cows at the beginning of the season when they're all a bit keen. We can put up real, real high. They have one little crack and they don't seem to touch electric fence ever again. Well, not for the season. Um, not unless we put a heifer out and they run through it and all the wonderful things that heifers like do the first time they ever see these things. Instead of going backwards, they just carry on going forwards with a great big hit of adrenaline after getting a zap from electricity. But anyway, digressing. This one, something I don't like, switches underneath. Yeah, also electric electrodes end up being underneath. I don't particularly like that. I prefer these two to be like on the Gallagher. Is encased in the back. Like everything is encased. So they're just to the side there on the back. These are underneath in the mud. Don't particularly like it. Uh, the switch is also underneath, which I don't really like that either. There, easy, clear, you can just sort of, you know, have it just behind the fence line, reach, change the setting, depending on what you want. This one, obviously got to tip him over to hit the switch. But other than that, they do exactly the same job. Run off sunlight, uh, produce electricity, run a fence, keep cows in, and hey, presto, that's what you got. But, obviously, uh, that's the S40. There are stronger, bigger fences out there. I expect loads of you use way bigger fences than these, especially if you've got dairy cows and run like two lines or something like that, or any of the sheep guys uh, fencing, ring fencing whole fields. But we just do a little bit of block fencing and that's about it, and they do the job. Right, now this video, other than the fences, is basically me going to be ranting on about stuff whilst I put up some fences, so just bear with me. Anyway, I'd like to say a massive, 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 massive thank you, massive, massive, massive thank you to Andy at, uh, it's a farming life for me, Andy gave us a big shout out on his channel, and lots of you wonderful, wonderful people have subscribed into us. Uh, part of me feels pressure. Hopefully uh, we manage to uh, entertain, if anything. Uh, thank you for subbing, that's wicked. On that, if you haven't yet done so, please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, give us a thumbs up if you like what you see, give you a thumbs down if you don't, but on general growth, we're here to stay, so sorry you can have to deal with it and if you've got anything on this video that you want to say leave a comment 
down below. If, again, if, if you would like more content from the Hating TV, you can also find us on Snapchat, Twitter, where you can talk to his royal shortness all you want. And we are on Instagram too, where I have sp spoken. Ugh, sorry, I had to look down. I nearly fell over a drink. But, but we're on Instagram as well, where I have spoken to lots of you. As you can all see, it is a wonderful day down in sunny Devon. The only thing I don't think you're all quite appreciating as it is all very, very windy. Fortunately, just so you all know, the new mic is on. So hopefully you are getting what I'm saying quite well, rather than <laughs> Right, I've just cut in that shot. It's taking me 10 minutes for me to remember where I left all the electric fence stakes from last year, which are in the side of the shed. But we'll get there eventually. Now, for all of you machinery fans, yes, you're quite right. That's the way you're carrying your fence posts on. Why? Uh, well, I'm having a bit of a quiet day to be honest, so I thought I'd enjoy, kind of enjoy the exercise of carrying these around. Plus, the Polaris Ranger RTV at the moment, my father's using, so I don't have that option. As said before, he used to have two RTVs and he broke his other one. So he started stealing the Polaris, which I kind of used for all my little jobs. Again, so anyone's wondering why you bother to fence off the 10 cows? Again, you're gonna have to stay tuned. But in one of the next episodes, we are gonna be letting them out start with and I'll explain more then. So I don't know if you can all see we've got this rickety old fence line which I've got to fix this spring but I haven't got time to do it right now before we let the cows out. So first of all, of all first of all we're gonna run an electric fence down beside this um, to stop the cows even trying to test this fence and then I'm going to run another fence that way to give them their first block. So, oh, I've got another gate shut, joy. Shut a couple of gates, stop them going between fields.
So, whilst I move up or walk up to the other gate, this little drunk paddock has three points to go to three different other fields. I will just break something or start breaking something down. So, we have 10 cows. We did a bull, fortunately, he's dead. We're waiting to get a replacement. Uh, we have to wait and see on that one. But, I don't know if you. So, this paddock here that I'm in is one of their grazing areas. And then over the houses, the strip, which they have for grazing. The main block of the field, the other side of the fence, we um, harvest from. Then there's a little old meadow on the other side of this hedge. Uh, their grazing comes up to a maximum of about five and a half acres, which isn't a lot for a cow over a year period. But what we do is we split that in to 40 different rotation blocks, which means even the drought last year and the drought the year before, with all the hot weather we had, we always had grass because we don't just fence forward, we fence behind them. So what we lose with creating a little track here and there, we gain because each block has 40 days rest before it's grazed again. So it has loads of time to recover rather than the cows going back and just nibbling over the top and just nibbling over the top and just keeping it down. We let it get to its full potential rather than constantly getting cut off where it's short and sweet, because they do love it when it's short and sweet, rather than filling the cow up and keeping the cow lie down to its cud more than wandering around grazing. A few of you have asked for more, oh, I'll just start here, so I'll just shut that gate. That gate goes up across two couple of fields and you're at farm two, which is up there. Farm one's this way. We'll head back down to shut that gate. Um, just another thing, anyone that is looking at any of our videos, I've started bunching up in playlists. Again, I've got to thank uh, Andy from uh, his channel, It's Farming Life For Me. Double shout out, Andy. Lucky guy, but thank you very much because you gave us a massive shout out and it was awesome. Um, but he told me how to do a playlist because still massively, Adam and I are absolute novice at this sort of thing. We are definitely not pros and we are quite inept at using most technology, apart from machinery. I don't know, yes, loads are gonna come out of jokes. Good job. But anyway, on um, things I've read, a bunch of you have asked for more cow stuff no problem on that. Uh, a couple of you asked about our old way we did beef. I will come up with a video on that for you all to um, see of how we got from that to here or with what we're doing now. Um, and just, well, just slowly, slowly explain the story that we as how I have gone through here. I had a bit of a problem now. I thought I rolled this field and it is definitely not as flat as I thought it was with the odd cow divot still in it. But, but we don't roll to make it flat because if you want to make a field flat, you'd be here forever. Stuff. I gave a shout out the other day and that seemed to have a really good response. Any of you guys playing Farm Simulator? Big hand to you. In my eyes, anything that is linking people or keeping anyone involved with agriculture, whether it is on a computer or real or even growing veg in the garden, that is awesome in my eyes. Um, a lot of people detach 
from agriculture, even though we kind of are the start of everything. Like, that's not being sort of like big headed in, in agriculture, but you know, if you don't have food, it's kind of game over. Like, water, then food, then everything else. But yeah, again, massive big hand to any of you that enjoy Farm Simulator, play it, whether you are in the ag world or not. Um, again, I said in the video the other day, or Adam and I did, that we're kind of privileged. Like, a lot of my mates think I've been for hours of, well, hours of work. Myself, father, all the other guys here, those people think we're mad. But at the end of the day, we're actually privileged. One, at the moment, we still work, so we aren't bored sat at home. And two, who on earth would want to really miss being in this to be stuck in office? Because I know what I would pick every single time. But ag, I got a feeling that we're going to be on the way up in the world because there's a lot going on at the moment. And eventually, I kind of think people might remember us again. But I've got other things to say on this matter, but not quite yet. So, little recap what we're doing. Put a fence up. Fence is up. Next job, tighten it up. Then put up fence two. And after that, well, I think then I'm gonna have a cup of tea, because I can. So I did say I was going to put up two fences. On a recollection from last year, I was going to put one until day two, and then I put up two. Um, so just get used to one um, electric barrier to start with before I put a second one up across the field to then start blocking up the ground. Um, mostly because I did remember we've got three heifers that have only done one season out. So they went into ball last year, haven't calved yet, they're in calve, so don't really want them to get proper stressed out. So I'm going to leave it like that for a minute, but here's the ladies for all you cow lovers that it has been asked to see more cows. So they will be going out and hopefully staying out for the summer. The one thing that we have and do is if it starts setting it too wet, we will tend to bring them back in. It doesn't make any difference to us if uh, we change the way they're grazing or what they're feeding on because we're not milking them. They are just feeding a calf. If you want to know more about why the calves are going out without them, hit one below and I will answer your questions. Anyway, without further ado, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's good to see you all. Um, if you haven't yet done so, obviously you know what to do. Don't need to go over this. You know, it's old news now. But you know what to do. Again, thanks for this time in life. Also, climbing fences. Thanks to you guys for watching. See you in the next one.